Hey guys, this is E. Kirsch, and I'm going to be showing you an instructable how to make a very powerful crossbow that shoots 35 feet and up. Tin foil balls. And it can also shoot pencils. It can be modified to shoot pencils and bolts. And it has a real trigger, and it will come out looking something like that. Now, what you will need, I'm just going to go through this fast. You will need a drill. Uh, um, a saw, any saw that you're comfortable with. I'm going to be using a jab saw and a coping saw. A clamp to hold it while the wood's drying. Sandpaper. Um, a two, one two inch nail. Three and three seven eighths of an inch screws. Now the wood you will need is, you'll need, oh, you'll also need two small, um, twist things, I forgot what they're called, but these, that they have them like toys. Now, the wood you'll need is, you'll need a long piece, it is, the width from here to here is two and a half inches, and the length of this piece of wood is fourteen and a half inches. The length is fourteen and a half, and the width is two and a half. Now, the thickness, just about this, doesn't really matter, just not too thin or not too thick. Then you'll also need another piece of wood. The width is also two and a half inches, but the length is only 12 inches. So approximately 12. Now, you'll need another little piece, squarish, I guess. And that piece is, how long is that piece? That piece is also 12 inches. And the, um... You'll need two 12-inch ones like this. Now, what else you'll need is, I prefer to use Gorilla Glue, because it's a great glue. It's hard, um, it dries hard and fast, and it's very strong. But I ran out of Gorilla Glue, so I'm going to be using Elmer's Wood Glue. But any wood glue will do, but preferably Gorilla. Now, what you're going to do is you're just going to take your two pieces of wood. This is going to be your first step. Um, here, your first step. Let me just set this tripod up. Okay. So, you can probably see that. Oh, you will also need three rubber bands. Now, you're going to want to take the longer piece, the 14 and a half inch, place it down on the table, and place it and place the shorter piece, the 12 inch, underneath it just like that. So you form a T, or, so it's a T, you can see, like that. And try to center this piece in the middle, and just at the edge so it lines up. Here you can see, like that. And it's approximately in the middle. Now what you're going to want to do, is you're going to want to glue it with your wood glue, whatever wood glue you're using. sit in this position, clamp down like this, for however long your wood glue says to let it sit. And just hold it down for a second. And what you can also do is if you have the clamp, you can take your clamp and put it on. Um, well, you could take this other piece of wood, just stick it right next to that, and then just clamp it on, because otherwise it'll fall. So, you can see that I clamped it on.
have three of them. Yeah, that's three. So, and you also need a drill bit, which is this, that is slightly smaller than your screws. The drill bit is optional though, but it'll make things easier. So I want it the same height as the other one, which I think it is. If you really want it to be good, all you have to do is take a ruler or something. Oh yeah, mine are pretty much exact. And just place it on top, and you can see they all line up with the um this piece. So that's perfect. And now. Okay guys, my other camera died, so I'm going to be using this camera, but we're up to one of the last steps, which is cutting. So, you're going to want to clamp, use a clamp, and clamp this crossbow onto a surface, kind of like I have it here, so you can cut it. And what you want to cut out is... I okay, I made a notch, and you can see there's the trigger, and my notch is there. And it's not a very deep notch at all. It barely goes in. But I went ahead and I did the, a couple steps to make it easier for you to see. So once you get the notch, you will also want to, once you make the notch in it, you'll want to make another hole in, the, in it on the bottom, more to the bottom half. So you can see that hole over there in the trigger, more to the bottom half of the trigger. And then drill that hole, and you can make it oh, and make it bigger than the top hole. Here, let me get one out. I'll show you what they look like. But these, remember these. You can find them on Nerf guns, toys, and you'll just take it and stick one down into the hole, and bring it up the other side, coming out the other hole, and then pull it tight as tight as you can around the nail. So you can see. I did that, and you can see it's under, and pull it as tight as you can, and you could use pliers to pull it tight too. So it's really tight against the nail, and the nail shouldn't be able to move. Then um, you could clip the top. Also, do the same exact thing on the other side. Pull the wire tight, stick it in through the top, and then go in the bot, then come out and go back up through the other hole, and then pull it very, very tight and make a loop out of it. Very tight, you can use pliers. So now you should have, if you've been following all the instructions, crossbow that looks like this. And the trigger should look like that. And you should be able to pull it on there. But it should be very loosely. Like you should be able to spin it all around. And if you centered it correctly, the trigger should be able to go all the way. Like so, um, the top right right here this part should be able to go right down to the front like that or at least up or at least down this far all right now the next step is you're going to need your three rubber bands now you're going to take one of them actually no sorry you can turn over your crossbow like so so it's upside down Alright, so I've drilled the screw in, and you want to drill it in, so you can see the screw, it's in pretty firmly. You want to go as far as you can without it coming out the other side. Um, depending on your size, bigger or smaller, you may need to adjust what I do. Okay, so you can see the rubber bands are through the hole here, and wrapped around the screw. Now you can make the screw a bit closer or a bit farther away, depending on how tight you want your trigger to be, or how hard the trigger should be to pull. 
Mine is pretty tough to pull right now. So I may move it a little closer. But for now, it's fine. And now your trigger should, your crossbow should be looking like this. You won't see the rubber band, and you should be able to pull your trigger, but it should have tension on it. So you want pretty hard tension on the trigger when you pull it. And that's your trigger mechanism. And now there's just one more step. Taking these two, taking two rubber bands, just unwrap them. So two rubber, two rubber bands, and you want to make an, you want to knot them both together. Or if you have one very big rubber band, you can do that. But I did this. I took two rubber bands and I knotted it together in the middle. So that's two. Now you can look up how to knot them in the middle on YouTube. Um, or any site, they probably have it on here on Instructables, that's the greatest site to find out how to do things. So look it up on Instructables, how to do this. I don't want to um, make this video like longer than it even is. But once you get this, all you do is take one, one side of the rubber band, put it again. So now I have a bit more tension on my other crossbow. It's like wrapped around like six times on each screw, so the more, the more tension. And now your crossbow is complete. Um, I'm going to spray paint this, and I will show you right after I spray paint it. But in the meantime, uh, let me just show you how to use it. So what you will do is you'll take the rubber band, grab it in the middle, pull it back, 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 back around the trigger. And you want to get it stuck in that little groove. But not all the way. It doesn't always have to be in the groove, but try and make it in the groove or higher up. And... So you'll have that, and then all you do is you pull the trigger, and it goes, so. Alright, so I'm back with a shooting test. The crossbow is completely finished, and the glue looks so much nicer than all these ugly nails. So always use glue when you're making stuff like this. It's really good. Um, and another option, if you want, you can see my other one has a handle. So you can really do two screws and just stick them in backwards. And then you'll have a handle on it. You can hold it like so. So a handle. that I, I would do that if I were you. It works out pretty good. But now I'm just going to load it and I'll show you the shooting test. It shoots tinfoil balls. hard, um, Lots of tinfoil crumpled up into a hard little ball. And I find bigger ones go higher and smaller ones go lower. The bigger ones like that size works the best. In the back. Not too far back, but pretty far back. And then, yeah, I don't know if you can see that, but that just went very far and very powerful. And this thing shoots over, well, my other one shot over like 35 feet. This could go like 40, 45 and up. So it's great. And now I'm going to spray paint it, and I'll just show you the spray painted version, and I'll be back. And that is the crossbow. I hope you enjoy it. It's very fun. You can experiment with all different size tinfoil balls. Thanks. Okay. Um, well, you've finished your crossbow. And I just painted. I spray painted it. And now I think it looks pretty cool. Um, here. Let me get a picture of this. And you can see... It's kind of blue, green, and silver, and there's like two little designs up top. And the trigger is nice, real trigger, you can see, unlike most designs. And the bottom is just silver. And I think it came out pretty good. And it definitely came out much, much better than the one that I did with um, nails. And also, I went to Home Depot and I bought some of new Gorilla Glue. So now I can use that, which is good. Alright, thanks and have fun with your crossbow.